go back to what you said is triggering to you because I, I, I love that you said that. And, and um, a lot of people think that. And, a, and it's not wrong. I get mm -hmm. it. You know, a, a single woman or even a woman with no kids, how can she coach or therapy a woman who is a mother or a single woman? How can she coach or therapy or help or be a psychologist with people who are having marital but, but issues? You're, you're, you're single. I'm single. OK. Yes, I'm single. And so I love what you're saying because um, I don't know what other therapists, psychologists or coaches do, but I don't coach married couples. Stick with me. People come to me who are married. I'm helping each of them process their own stuff. Because what a marriage is, and your mama will know it, because she's a church woman, and from what you, that just what she said, she said, beyond wise. Years right. Of marriage. And even what she said about marriage, everybody want to go to heaven, but you know, there's a lot of hell in it, and love that she said that. Um, marriage, like the Bible says, is cleaving. Cleaving does this. Cleaving does this. <laughs> Cleaving doesn't do this. And so when people come to me married, they're doing similar to mama's statement. They're coming to me like this. What do you think about this? <laughs> <laughs> so from their very first statement that they said, I'm not as much of a fan of single people trying to counsel married people in marriage. That I think is a truth. You can have all of the knowledge you want to. You can have acquired as much information as you want to. But if you don't have the wisdom, which is the application of that knowledge, all you have is information. And there is a missing component to you being able to talk to people who are married about marriage. But she said, I don't counsel married couples. I counsel people who are married, mm -hmm. but I just deal with the individual dealing with their stuff. And what she said is actually very, very important okay. because this is one of the things about being married that a lot of people don't understand about marriage. Mm -hmm. Everybody's always trying to fix their husband or their wife. Mm -hmm. And they always talk about what their husband and their wife is doing wrong. Mm -hmm. If you change how you act, mm -hmm. your marriage will change. This is true. Because now your husband or your wife has to now adjust to you doing different things. Right. Acting a different way. Mm -hmm. So if you start acting in a healthier way, then your husband or your wife will have to react to you acting different. Right. So... She can affect a marriage without counseling the marriage, but just counseling one of the people Within in the, the marriage. marriage. True. That's the reason why in one of the Bible verses we talked about a while ago, and we were talking about submission and wives. Mm -hmm. And the Bible was like, even if your husband is not in the church and in Christ, you still have to submit to him mm -hmm. in all things outside of those things which he may tell you to do that's against following God. Now, mm -hmm. that's where your cutoff is. Right. You don't turn on God for this husband or this wife. Right. Right. As a general rule. But as long as he's not telling you to do anything against me, you submit to your husband because your submission is a testimony to your husband. And right. that's how you're going to reach your husband by doing what I tell you to do, regardless of what he's doing. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why the verse is there like that. That's the reason True. why in the Bible there was a priest that was told to marry a prostitute. Mm. You think he was happy about that? Bruh. <laughs> could you could you imagine? <laughs> we were talking about this last night. Can you imagine? <laughs> you sit up there like God. Oh God. Um you want me to marry her? Mm. Yep. Yes, I do. Well, uh you know she's a prostitute. Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get her. Mm -mm. I'm gonna get her and I need you to help me to get her, and this is how you're gonna do it. Uh, so she gonna stop prostitute. That's what it is. She gonna stop. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, she gonna? You mean she not gonna stop? No. She, she not gonna stop until we go to the altar. Mm -hmm. No. Everybody's gonna have a turn. <laughs> Even after you're married, and they're gonna know that she's your wife. Bruh. Yeah. <laughs> See, you're my prophet, and what I need you to do <laughs> is to take this L. <laughs> <laughs> Take this L and cuddle it. <laughs> Hold it close to your bosom. <laughs> Hold this L and love it. 
Because <laughs> through you, I'm going to get to her. You're still going to have to do how I told you to treat a wife. You're still going to have to sacrifice for her. You're still going to have to love her. You're going to show her. Because, see, you're going to show her my love. And by showing her my love, that's how I'm going to get it. But I need you to do your part. <laughs> That's that's all. I, that's what I need you to worry about. I don't need you to complain to me about what she's doing because I know what she's doing. I need you to do your part. Mm. So therein, she has a very powerful point. Yeah, counseling one of the people in the union will change the union. Yeah, and as long as she's not necessarily trying to counsel the marriage Itself. as the marriage. Yeah. That's legit. And at first, when she's, you know, when I first heard her say that, I was like, mm. <laughs> but as I thought, I was like, yeah, because if you change one of the people, you change, you change the union. Yeah. So yeah. that's legit. Yeah. Okay. But you, you have to be careful, though, because not all psychologists are created equal. Not at all. So even with that, you still have to be very careful because you, you don't want to go to somebody who might be biased. There are some psychologists that we've seen on YouTube that would talk about marriage from a very mm. broken place because mm. they're divorced. Mm. So mm. you might want to just be careful with that. Not saying that you can't get some information to help you learn what not to do. Mm. Um, but if your goal is to try to stay together and you want to try to make things better, then yeah, you really do your research and make sure that the source is someone who actually has wisdom, not just knowledge, but wisdom. And as Jay said, wisdom only comes with you applying your knowledge, yes. putting it into action. Yeah. Yeah. But let's, let's get back into it. And so I'm not counseling married couples. I'm counseling individuals who are coming with so many issues within themselves that they married on paper, but they ain't never even had a chance to be married mentally, emotionally, spiritually, sexually, intellectually in any way. But what happens is, as I help them as individuals process through their traumas and their pain and their intergenerational issues, they magically either usually cleave or not many, but some depart. Because and I want to jump in and throw one more thing in there. One thing she said is a lot of people are doing marriage like this. Mm. Yeah. You know what this is called? Independent. Mm. That's what that is. That's independent. This is well. interdependence. Two fully functioning adults depending on each other to mm. get more done than either one of them could do alone. Yeah. That requires trust. And a lot of us don't have trust because we're in situations where the people around us are picking terrible which and they taught us how to pick terrible, terrible and then we get mad at the people that we picked mm. they are terrible but you also picked a terrible yeah and we don't like to take the amount of blame that comes on our side as being the person who picked a bad person yeah every bad relationship that i've ever had and it hasn't been mine most most of the women i picked were really good but i did have a few bad relationships that was on me and every relationship that I went on after that, I made sure that the characteristics that I saw that made that bad relationship was not in my next one. Because mm. I had to take some responsibility for me picking this type of person. Because if you don't take any responsibility, you can never avoid it. You're always going to run into the same thing. Right. You have to take some fault. I'm going to say, keeping in line with what you just said, one of the things I think that's important as well, because sometimes I think that comes, I think, with maturity, as far as like a mindset and not everybody has keep on going oh not everybody has that um that mindset or maturity level oh sorry <laughs> y'all know i'm soft-spoken that's okay um, <laughs> good they don't necessarily have that maturity level to say like okay where did i mess up so that way in my next relationship, I don't take this. That's why it's important for you to have a community and have people around you like who are really interested in your well-being and people who tell you when you're wrong, you know, because a lot of times you might have a whole bunch of people around you. But are those people like true friends where if they see you out of pocket, if they see you doing things that they know are not right or they see how your relationship went and they can actually see the part that you played like in the relationship and how things went bad. Do they actually tell you because that might be a blind spot for you and that's mm -hmm. something that you might need assistance with. But I just want to throw that in there yeah. because you cannot cleave without shedding and the shedding that cleaving takes is the shedding of your stuff. 
your mm -hmm. ego, your emotions, your trauma, your pain pockets. And when you shed of that, the cleaving was already waiting there for you. So it's not that anyone, even other therapists, are teaching married people how to cleave or be married. They're really breaking down the barriers that people have that are keeping them from being loving or in love or like mom said, keeping them from going not only to heaven, but sometimes taking that detour to hell just to get to heaven again, just to get back to hell, to get back to heaven. Yeah. And so I don't teach them how to be married because I don't think that's something that can be taught. I think that comes through each end of- All right, guys, and if you made it this far in the video, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Go ahead and turn your post notifications so that way YouTube can know that you appreciate what we're putting down. What we're putting down. All right. See, now this is where the whole you not being able to apply the knowledge wisdom part because she hasn't been married. I totally disagree with that. <laughs> you definitely can teach someone how to be married. Everybody's marriage looks different, absolutely, because no two people are the same, just like no two marriages will be the same. However, there there's a reason why, statistically speaking, of course, there's always an exception to the rule. Statistically speaking, typically strong marriages that you see come from two individuals who came from a two-parent home who had a strong marriage. Typically, you see that continue. Not all the time, but most of the time, you typically see that. But again, there's an exception to every rule. There are certain things, certain characteristics that are throughout all successful marriages that you would only no, because of something you observe. As kids, you know, grow up or whatever, they watch their parents. They watch what they do more than what they say. And they re they always remember, I'm trying to remember what this quote is. I forgot who said it. It was like, I may never remember what you say, but I remember how you made me feel. So growing up in a household, a two parent household with like a successful marriage, children know what that, they know what it feels like. So if they are in a relationship with someone and it doesn't, there's that some mm, that they can't really put their finger on, they know because they felt it, they saw it, they observed it and everything like that in their home. So I totally disagree with that, that you can't teach someone how to be married because I think that you can. Uh, there are certain things in all marriages, like she said, mm -hmm. that is universal. The ability to communicate in successful marriages has to be there. And mm -hmm. that is something that can be taught. Right. A lot of people don't know how to properly communicate with each other. And that doesn't mean that you completely eliminate the man and the woman thing that happens. This thing <laughs> that I talk about often, this thing, I say you heard. Right. That is a thing. A part of that is because men and women communicate differently. Right. But the patience and learning how to treat a wife, learning how to tend to a husband, mm -hmm. those are universal. In the Bible, y'all, mm -hmm. they say, woman, respect your husband. And they say, man, love your wife. Mm -hmm. Then they break down what love looks like. You got to sacrifice for him. Mm -hmm. You got to treat her like Jesus Christ treats church. Mm -hmm. She got to be like church treating Treat Jesus Christ. Like that's what it, he very specifically lays out some things that are universal in marriages if you want them to work mm -hmm. and to be successful. And some unsuccessful marriages that a lot of people have seen are when those things are out of whack. When the man doesn't have respect, the marriage looks out of whack because the man looks emasculated. Mm -hmm. When the wife does not have the love from the husband, it looks like the wife is a slave in the house. Mm -hmm. That's how it looks when those components are missing. And if you grow up in a household that is doing those things, you tend to look for that when you're looking for someone to mate with. Right. And if you don't, like so many of us nowadays, you run into mess and you pick mess and you make mess. Yes. And then you say, oh, marriage is not good. Or, yeah. you, say, or you turn around and you blame the marriage. And right. Like, no, no. Right. It's not marriage. Yeah. <laughs> that's the issue. Yeah. That yeah. part. It's us. Exactly. That's the issue. That we got to get it together. Yep. Individual marriage couple, because there's not one way to do it. I'm helping them break down the barriers that are keeping them from what they really want, which is to be safe, to be in love, to go to this heaven space, but to learn how to have the bandwidth to get through the journey of hell that comes as well. Yeah, I, I must ask this question because it, it, I'm a product of this. Yeah. 
Has your profession affected your outlook on a relationship? 100%. How? Um, my husband will be very, very grateful to all of my clients these past 16, 17 years because uh, um, my female clients have helped shape me to have more compassion. It has helped shape me to have better understanding of the pressures and the seasons that come in motherhood, that come in marriage. And my male clients, particularly my black male clients, the married ones, have really gave me insight on the weight that comes with being a husband, being a father, um, how much they really are giving their all and trying their best, but it looks different to her. Uh, and so learning how to read and communicate, Cam, um, Cam, what does it mean when you text me randomly throughout the day and just say, what are you doing? Is, is that a message? Is, does that, what are you doing? Is that a message where you're just trying to tell me, baby, I love you, but you didn't say the words? So if I know that what are you doing means I love you, as your wife, the Bible says, love you by knowledge of you, not understanding, knowledge. I now know how to code that. So that helps me not personalize, but you ain't doing it my way. But you didn't say, I love you. And you saying, but baby, I say what you're doing, and that means I love you. So my clients have helped me um, dissipate my ego. And they have helped me um, not only gain a sense of self, but understand the different languages that men can speak. Also, it's allowed me to have more compassion and break my fairy tale ideology that women have. I always say this, men get married and become a father and go, oh, shoot. Okay, I didn't know it was gonna take all of this. Game time, let me try to figure this out. Let me try to see if I can do this and do that and get the card and do this and love her more and, and, and balance all this. Women, we meet you and we're like, our idea and our fairy tale is you are Prince Charming, honey. And then we try to get you to fit Prince Charming. And the more you don't fit it, the more y'all end up in my office going, but he doesn't do this. Well, has he ever did it? No, but I always just thought my husband would, your husband or this man. So are you getting to know who you with? Or are you making this man fit this fairy tale ideology that doesn't even exist anyways? Mm. <sighs> That's that disnification we be talking about. What sucks is that people will not give the red pill. They props. Give them. <laughs> they props. They told you. <laughs> Kevin d told you this. You just didn't like the way he said it. Mm. Yep. Yep, he did. Red pill told you a lot of this stuff. The disnification. Yes. They, they told you the stuff, but we didn't like them because, well, let's just be honest. Some of them was just like, I told you. <laughs> this is all your fault. That's, that's what they did. And, and everybody that, was like, no, you gonna, if you're going to kick me in the head about it, then I'm going to get it. You know, I understand. But yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. There it is. And statistically, it was a thing that we did before. And we did uh, marriage does benefit men. Oh, and we yeah. did a whole thing where we actually looked up the stats, Institute of Family Studies and all of that other stuff about how marriages really are. Mm -hmm. One of the things they said was men tend to be happier and more content in marriages. Number one, they're they're easier to please. Mm -hmm. Right. They have a very short amount of things that you really need to do. You keep those things in place. They'll just deal with the rest of the stuff. Women tend to not be as happy as men in marriage unless they're being tended to a very specific way because of the exact thing that she's saying. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because the statistics actually back up what she's saying. And it's all about mindset. And I think one of the big issues is a lot of people nowadays, and I don't think this, maybe it's not nowadays, but a lot of people in general, mm -hmm. but it may be worse now, think that your husband or your wife is supposed to make you happy. Right, right, right. They're not. Yeah. And I thought it too. So it's not like this is something I knew and I was all, I didn't know, you know, I thought so too. And then you would wonder why you're still sad, still depressed, still whatever you're going through mm -hmm. after you've been married to this person. But you were so happy in the beginning. That's the infatuation stage that comes in his goals. And then you're still left dealing with your stuff. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's a part of the whole deal. So, uh, that part. All right, y'all. Well, that's going to be it. And I need you guys to do me a favor. We're cutting it short. I need you to go. I need you to press the like button. 
Mm-hmm. I need to press the subscribe button. Mm-hmm. I need you to press the subscribe. Wow. <laughs> I need you to press the subscribe button. Mm-hmm. I need you to press the notification button. Mm-hmm. I need you to hit all the buttons. Yes. Thank you. All right, y'all. Well, that was it. We kept it short and sweet. There will be more of these dropping back to back to back to back. I'm going to be just dropping them this week. I'm not going to be trying to do a lot of crazy stuff. I just want to get out our points about it. And um, so you'll be looking out for more videos from us very soon. All right, y'all. Peace. Peace. Hey, everybody. Down in the description, there are two links. One is to a GoFundMe. And the other one is to a video that explains what the GoFundMe is for. Mm-hmm. Long story short, we have a medical situation with our daughter that we have to pay for everything out of pocket. And we can really use you guys' help. If you have the time, uh, we'd love for you to go check it out. If you have the money, the funds, we'd love for you guys to help. If not, maybe you could send a link to somebody else who can help. Uh, we thank you for your time. Thank you. Peace. Press the help button. <laughs>